What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Rivers Talk Sports. Jordan Love is now the highest paid quarterback in the NFL with an average salary amount of $55 million per year tied with Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow. Listen, I'm a Packers fan, and I'm just as shocked as all Packers fan and the rest of the NFL fans. But I'm kind of here to tell you that the Packers had no choice but to do this for Jordan Love as well as making him the franchise quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Now, coming into the 2024 season, instead of the Green Bay Packers accepting his fifth-year option or denying it, the Green Bay Packers felt like it was best to give him a one-year extension worth $22.5 million, $13.5 million guaranteed, and $9 million in incentives. Had the Green Bay Packers accept the fifth year option, they would have paid Jordan Love 20 plus million dollars fully guaranteed. And they just did not feel like that was a smart business decision, not knowing how Jordan Love will play in his first full season. So they decided to compromise and let Jordan Love bet on himself, as well as give him an extra year to see how he would do. Well, the first half of the season, Jordan Love's start was a bit rocky. Now, as someone that watched kickoff up into the final four zeros of every game, um, most of the first half of the season wasn't necessarily Jordan Love's fault. Yes, there were some erratic throws. The O-line was subpar. The receivers weren't running the routes or being aggressive when the ball was in the air. The execution of the play calling wasn't there. But the first half of the season overall was just a cluster of this team trying to figure themselves out. Up until the Pittsburgh Steelers game where everything just started to click and this team and Jordan Love specifically had potential. And then for the final eight games of regular season, that potential turned into the reality of talent and upside of what he could bring to this franchise in which they ended the regular season, six wins, two losses. He had 18 touchdowns one interception, and pretty much Jordan Love looked like a top five quarterback for the last eight weeks of the season in which he had the best touchdown to interception ratio and completion percentage out of all quarterbacks in the final eight weeks. Then he takes the youngest team in NFL history to the playoffs, pretty much the same team that Aaron Rodgers had last year. Jordan Love pulls his team together, takes the youngest team ever to the playoffs and demolish the Dallas Cowboys in which Jordan Love threw for three touchdowns and had a near perfect passer rating. Then they eventually go on to play the San Francisco 49ers in which it was a really tough game. Um, but who knows in life, you can't play the coulda, woulda, shoulda things in life. Yes, Darnell Savage could have intercepted the ball from Brock Purdy. Yes, Carlson could have made the field goal. A lot of things could have happened for this team to make it to the NFC Championship, but the team is still green. They just, at that time, it just didn't look like they were just there yet, even though they were very close. But with the final eight weeks of the regular season, defeating Dallas and this team just almost taking down the 49ers, the Green Bay Packers organization pretty much had in their mind that Jordan Love is the franchise quarterback. And pretty much, he pretty much outplayed his um, one-year extension. And trying to put your, try to put yourself in Jordan Love's shoes, right? You signed that one-year extension, 13 and a half guaranteed. You pretty much threw for 4,000 yards, finished second in touchdown passes, and take the youngest team ever to the playoffs and be a top five team in the playoffs. Do you think you should get paid that much the following year? And Jordan Love and his agent did not think that. And per over the cap, Jordan Love's 2023 valuation, Jordan Love played like a $36 million quarterback. So pretty much Jordan Love was not practicing because him and his agent felt like, hey, I am worth more than this. I deserve to get a contract, especially if you think I'm the franchise quarterback and I'm the franchise quarterback. I think it's time to pay me like a franchise quarterback, just like the rest of his 2020 first round quarterback counter mates. 
the Jared Goff started to get paid, the Trevor Lawrences, so on and so forth, where I'll be very honest, for a first-year quarterback in his first season, after sitting three years behind Aaron Rodgers, me personally as a Packers fan, I am very surprised that he got this much. But just looking at what Jordan Love did in his first full season, there is tremendous upside and tremendous things that he can do for this Green Bay Packers organization. Now, I'm going to tell you guys something that a lot of you may not know. There have been two quarterbacks in NFL history that have thrown for 4,000 yards and 30-plus touchdown passes in their first full season. One of them is Kurt Werner, Hall of Fame quarterback, and the second one is Patrick Mahomes, who is a current quarterback for the Chiefs, and pretty much he is a first ballot Hall of Famer. So the fact that Jordan Love has put himself in that kind of tier in his first season as a starter, that shows franchise-level level quarterback play, that he could be the next franchise quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Also, Jordan Love has had a better completion percentage, threw for more yards, and has more touchdowns than Aaron Rodgers and Brett Favre did in their first season starting for the Green Bay Packers. So that's another thing that's going for him. And on top of that, he's shown tremendous, tremendous leadership, tremendous poise, and took the youngest team to the playoffs. So the fact that he threw for 4,000 yards, 30-plus touchdown passes, and took the youngest team ever to the playoff, he had a legitimate argument to get a contract extension and be the franchise quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Now, with that being said, even though that he is getting paid the average of $55 million, he is not getting paid $55 million per year. As you see in the contract extension that he agreed on, it's pretty much team friendly for the next few seasons. As you see, 20 plus million, in the first year, so on and so forth. So pretty much, it's a pretty team-friendly contract from what you see. Um, but now, what you see towards the end of the contract, you just see that balloon payment of $74 million. This is a conversation that the Packers are going to have when the time comes, but this is something that the Green Bay Packers decided to do to pretty, to pretty much backload a majority of this money towards the end of the contract so that they can pretty much build the team around Jordan Love for the next four years. So he has the 20, so the Green Bay Packers have 2024 all the way through 2027, that small window with the nice team friendly cast base that he has to pretty much pull it together and kind of have MVP caliber seasons and hopefully bring the Lam uh, Lombardi trophy back home with that $74 million there's a few things that's going to happen. The Green Bay Packers are really, really going to beg Jordan Love to restructure his contract or the potential of probably having a new quarterback at that time. We will see what will happen in 2028, but for the time being, the Packers have a really nice window for the next four years in terms of the team that they have, the rapport, the chemistry, and the kind of cat space that Jordan Love's contract does have. The, the Packers do have a solid four-year window. Me, personally, I think the Packers will probably view the $74 million as a restructure. And Jordan Love could have gotten five years, but he decided to go four years because he knows that the cash space is going to go higher in the next four years and retest to see what the market is. Now, I think that we can all agree that Jordan Love is not going to be the highest paid quarterback for long. Dak Prescott is up next. I'm sure he's going to break 60. Then you have the Brock Purdy's. Brock Purdy's trying to get somewhere six, between 60 to 65. Then you have the C.J. Strouds. And then after the C.J. Strouds, then you have the Jaden Williams. And Kilo. So pretty much, even though Jordan Love's contract seems very enormous for a one-year starter, by the time Dak and Purdy rolls around, Jordan Love would not be the highest paid quarterback in the next three to four years. This contract would not mean that much as it does now. And I just feel like where the where the cap space is right now and where it's going in the future, we're all going to have just kind of, I want to say negative remarks, but I just feel like we're always going to have that this person's overpaid type 
discussion every single year. It's going to happen. You saw Daniel Jones, 40 mil, so on and so forth. So I just feel like at the end of the day, Jordan Love is pretty much trying to protect himself, his financial stability, and being a franchise quarterback. And I just feel like nowadays, if you're an organization and a quarterback proves it in his final year of this rookie deal and you feel like he's a franchise quarterback, you're pretty much going to have to do whatever you can to pay him what he wants or he'll leave him a free agency. Pretty much in Jordan Love's situation. The Packers had a few options. Either pay him his extension, force Jordan Love to play on that one-year extension, potentially get hurt and not get paid what he's worth, have him play in that one-year extension, the Green Bay Packers win the division, make it to the NFC Championship, or potentially win the Super Bowl. Now Jordan Love is asking between 60 to $7 million and pretty much going to leave. So the Packers had essentially two options. Pay him what he wants and pay him where the market is at or let Jordan Love leave in free agency. And pretty much the Green Bay Packers had to pay Jordan Love what he wanted. And honestly, I my prediction, I kind of feel like Jordan Love has the capability to be the next MVP in the league. And I honestly think that he has a really good chance to win the Lombardi Trophy and have the Green Bay Packers win a championship. The good thing about what Jordan Love has and what the Green Bay Packers going on and why they are also able to take this kind of risk is – if there is one organization that is really good at developing quarterbacks, it's the Green Bay Packers where they can really take a risk like this. And a big kudos to this organization is Tom Clemens. He took the job for the Green Bay Packers in 2006 in his second year with the Green Bay Packers. He helped Brett Favre finish second in the MVP and second team All-Pro, played a big role in in Aaron Rodgers' development, in which Aaron Rodgers won the Super Bowl and had multiple MVPs. And on top of that, he is still with the Green Bay Packers, still trying to develop Jordan Love. So they have a really great thing going on. And I just feel like, yes, as a Packers fan, it is high. I'm not going to lie. It is really high, and there's such a big risk for paying Love this much. I'm happy for him. Um, but I think that the Packers – was just pretty much had to pay him or let him leave him for agency. And when you find a franchise quarterback and you're in an organization, you pretty much have to pay him. And eventually the cap space is going to go on and up and up. And this contract will not matter that much. But thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, give the video a thumbs up and let me know your thoughts in the comments below on Jordan Love's contract and what you think about this whole situation and what you think how Jordan Love can turn out to be. Thank you so much and catch you next time.